early hours of 26 February, multiple Indian formations closed in at different sectors. The PAF's response was immediate. I am taking four high-speed aircraft near international border in Fazilka sector. The activity is also developing in south as well. Hot Temple, 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 Divert cap or line of control. With the AF fighters closing in, six Indian mirages turned back. Once they met with Pakistani caps patrol, they could not have the courage to actually carry out what they thought they were actually going to carry out. While formation of six Mirage 2000s released their glide bombs near line of control, committing airspace violation of around two to three kilometers as they turned back. Some Dan's airspace. Meeting an immediate response from the Pakistani Air Force, Indian jets released their payload inside Pakistani territory and retreated. The same morning, Pakistan's Prime Minister called a national security meeting to assess the damage. Prime Minister Khan was left with no other option but to give the green signal to his joint military command to respond to India's uncalled aggression. The very next day, at about 0900 hours, loaded with deadly array of state-of-the-art weaponry, a strike package comprising of total 18 Pakistani Air Force planes rolled down the runway for a top-secret mission. The senior who briefed us, the opening sentence was, gentlemen, you are the luckiest guys. The strike package comprised of mirages for ground strike, along with Pakistan's indigenously built JF-17 Thunders, with the top cover of AWACS and electronic warfare aircraft, as well as fighter suite. In just under 32 hours, a mission was underway that would demonstrate Pakistan's will and resolve, with clear message that violating airspace of nuclear armed country is an act of war. Prime Minister summoned national security meeting the same morning. The violation of Pakistan's tutorial integrity was apparent. Balakot is Pakistani territory by all measures and by all thinking. The response will come at the point and time of our choosing. There was consensus that the response had to be as measured and controlled as possible. The PAF, who was well prepared for a whole range of targeting options, was given the go-ahead by the country's prime minister. On the very next day, brief commenced early in the morning at an undisclosed air base. We carried out a detailed brief in which we discussed At first, we approached on the morning, 9 o'clock of uh, 27th February. Uh, and the attack came in the shape of uh, two Mirage 5 PAs armed with um, two H4 standoff weapons, backed up by JF-17s with 1,000 pounds range extension kits. Two Mirages, along with JF-17s, headed towards their respective pre-designated targets in Indian-occupied Kashmir. Pakistan should be on notice. Keep 
all options are on the table all options are on the table we the targets which were selected some of them at brigade level some of them at different depots indicated that we understand what is the stand of capability they went off the h4s were fired and now i started to concentrate on my target during the weapon to the target and you can see the target designated box shift away from the intended target because now the pilot wants the bomb to hit about a thousand yards away the h4 bombs were steered away from legitimate targets with great accuracy time was very limited i had only 15 to 20 seconds to carry out all this task on that i immediately unlocked the weapon and took it towards the right side to unpopulated area and the weapon impact the point which i had selected the h4 bomb is about 2600 pounds in weight so the tnt the explosive is immense it, the plans were that the h4s would not kill anyone and they didn't they went off the target deliberately as did the uh, weapons from the jf-17s the aim was not to go for a collateral damage so we engaged that target slightly offset to show them that we can engage any target at our own time of choosing and at our own will we engaged simultaneously six targets uh, without crossing we deliberately dropped them away from the actual targets to give them a message that we don't want to escalate the tensions but if you challenge the sovereignty of pakistan we are going to hit you and hit you really hard right onto the exact target strike was not just a strike it meant that you had so much confidence in your offensive team that you knew that they will hit the targets carry the precision send the message across will overwhelm indian defenses overwhelm indian radar capability and at the same time be prepared for a counter response from india the af's ground strike had meanwhile rung alarms on the indian air defense radars and patrolling indian fighters were directed to intercept them my job was to protect and provide coverage to the striker aircraft whose job was to go and deliver the weapon in the enemy territory formation from paf's fighter sweep was vectored towards two approaching iaf fighters they were actually two su-30s in this sector and as we say in our profession they were uh, grinding one plus one at certain altitude. Working at the rear of the PAF strike package were PAF's early warning and electronic warfare aircraft. You've got to understand that the, uh, the communications between all the Indian Air Force aircraft would have been jammed. It must have been pretty difficult out there, up in the air, not knowing what was going on. There was confusion all around in the enemy's flanks. They were running here and there, they were hiding behind each other's tail. The moment one of them, in state of confusion, came into a situation where uh, he could have been a threat to the strikers, uh, I engaged him. After sampling the target data and confirming valid firing parameters, squadron leader Hassan fired air-to-air -air missile. Camera 1, Camera 1, Fox 3, Fox 3 off the group. SU-30 is not an ordinary aircraft. It is a multi-role, uh, you know, almost a fifth generation platform. It is perhaps one of the best strike aircraft you can think of. Soon after the shootout, all hell broke loose in the Indian camp. Uh, this guy who's number one was actually shot uh, by myself. He just turned back and ran away like anything. There was also two Mirage 2000s, which claimed, uh, which the pilots claimed there were some issues with the radars, allegedly. They then pulled out. They had everything that they had that particular day because they were expecting Pakistan Air Force to respond. After having bombed a part of our a piece of our geography, they knew what the Pakistan Air Force was going to do to them in the next couple of days. An IAF MI-17 helicopter was scrambled for a search and rescue mission of downed Su-30 MKI. But in the chaos, it was taken for a hostile unmanned aerial vehicle by the Indian Air Defense Unit at Sirianagar, who fired a surface-to-air missile at it, leading to a case of horrific fratricide. No command and control, no ability to discern what was the real target. It was not the target, but a battery commander sitting there was probably looking for solutions and didn't have those solutions. The helicopter crashed near Budgum in the Indian-occupied Kashmir, killing six aircrew. 
And you have to ask yourself, why would an MI-17 be flying in the area? It appears to me and to many other commentators that that aircraft was there on a combat search and rescue mission to pick up the bound SU-30 pilot. In the ongoing fracas, the patrolling Indian formations dispersed. Five MiG-21 Bisons of number 51 Squadron were scrambled successively from Srinagar. One of these Bisons was flown by a senior Indian pilot, Wing Commander Abinadan, who soon after takeoff was deprived of situational awareness by the PAF's EW aircraft in the air. The jamming aircraft, which did a superb job, absolutely superb job jamming the communications of the, the Indian Air Force. Primarily, he couldn't hear the instructions from the ground controller at all. As soon as uh, we picked up uh, some of their jets uh, crossing the LOC, uh, we executed as per our plan. Hostel clear to engage. Before he could even get his bearings, Abinadan's MiG-21 was hit by a missile launched by Wing Commander Noman Ali Khan. Uh, it was uh, a planned execution of the kind of tactics we normally execute in our training. Copy kill, other one trailing by 10 miles, bugging out. They went blank, they were dark. It was dark for them. It was like a night. It was day, but it became a dark night for them. They didn't know what had hit them. Abin and been ejected, recovered on the ground, unstrapped himself from his chute. Uh, and uh, some verges came across Megan. Ultimately, the Pakistani army came along and, and took him away. Airstrike on Pakistan controlled casualty. Indian officials say Pakistan has shot down two Indian Air Force planes. The Pakistani military shot down two Indian jets today after they crossed the disputed border in Kashmir. The military also says its warplanes carried out airstrikes inside India. A very capable uh, operation which opened the eyes up many in the West. The big story breaking this morning, an F-16 of the Pakistani Air Force shot down a Sukhoi 30 MKI, the latest of India's Air Force. I found on the news that the Pakistan Air Force shot down a MiG-21 Bison and an SU-30 MKI. So I remember being absolutely gobsmacked. Though my ground crew, of course, not knowing what mission I was on and what has happened in the air, there was inquisitiveness in his eyes, which I could spot. Uh, he saw one missile missing of mine, uh, but out of the professionalism, he never asked me. And, and out of the professionalism, I was very excited to tell everybody that this is what has happened. All we did was land the aircraft, sign those jets back, come back to the debrief and prepare for the next day. Prime Minister Imran Khan announced his decision to repatriate Wing Commander Abinadan to India as a gesture of Hindustan peace to de-escalate the tension between the two neighbors. As a peace gesture, it was an excellent gesture. Uh, and how on earth could the uh, Pakistani Air Force of uh, bloody Indian Air Forces know so well? And it's all down to the uh, fantastic training. To the briefing, to going to the aircraft, starting it up, going in the air, it was so professional. And of course, it, 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 uh, I owe it back to the institution, to the training that we have been provided with. I've been to Pakistan Air Force many times, and I have to say the training is constant. I think 26th and 27th of February very clearly indicated that Pakistan is capable of not only handling an offensive operation inside Pakistani territory with Pakistani defensive measures, but is also capable of carrying out a counter-offensive at will, at discretion, and in broad. And if they will cross Pakistani territory, it will be taken as an act of war, and Pakistan will respond back. Modern combat, modern combat is like an orchestra. Every piece must play its part at the right time. And when that happens, you get a symphony. So you've got to make this symphony function and work together to produce the most beautiful 
music that you can see 27 february was that day when an excellent beautiful music was played for by the pakistan air force for the people of pakistan <laughs>